This video was created during the 2023 WGA and SAG strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, Ahsoka wouldn't exist. Learn more about the strike at the link in the description. Can you be a good boy and lay down? <laughs> Ela, okay. can you sit? Yeah, oh, you can just sit what a and good chill. boy. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the weekly Q&A. Audrey and Jordan Catley ask if we'll see Anakin again in the series or again in the future. Uh, I think this is coming up. This came up a lot in our live stream uh, discussion after the episode, and there is a trailer with more lines from Hayden that we haven't heard yet. So could that be evidence that Anakin's going to pop back up in the rest of Ahsoka? I tend to say no just because we've seen in the past uh that they'll sometimes record lines or show scenes in trailers that just aren't in the show uh specifically to just build hype so that, that's my guess as well that yeah. Filoni was just throwing in some red herrings for the trailer I wouldn't be surprised if we did see him again and I certainly wouldn't be mad about it um just like a quick shot of force ghost Anakin giving Ahsoka, like a an appreciative nod, like you did at, it, kid, at the end of the season or something, <laughs> um, but or at the end of the show even. Uh, but I think for this discussion, I'm going to say no. I, I think that he is probably not going to be in the rest of it. Part of that is to just not get my hopes up. Uh, I, I think that Filoni probably didn't want to give away any of the actual lines from the episode away. So for the trailer. I believe he recorded lines that were at least very similar to Tales of the Jedi in one of those episodes, if not identical. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, it, they were like words of encouragement of like, you can do this, Ahsoka. Uh, I feel like she doesn't need those words of encouragement now. Uh, she's already become Ahsoka the White. So I, I think that that part of Anakin encouraging her is probably done. I'm not expecting to see him in the rest of the show, uh, but I would be shocked if we like never ever saw Force Ghost Anakin Hayden returning at some point in the future. I, I think they spent a lot of money making him look very good in this episode. So maybe for Filoni's film, mm. uh, when they have a movie size budget, they could do that again for another significant appearance. That would be awesome. Tom Burmeister wants to know if the Force could be absent or diminished in Thrawn's galaxy. So I've seen a lot of people discussing this, and there's certainly a lot of speculation about the distant galaxy because we have been excited to get there. We have no idea what it's going to look like. We have to wait until Tuesday. I assume they'll be there next Tuesday. Uh, I think that the Force will be there. I think people were kind of thinking about how in Legends and the original Thrawn books, he goes and he gets these creatures called Salamiri, which can kind of block the Force. That wasn't something that George Lucas was a fan of. Uh, Dave Filoni talked about that in Star Wars Rebels. There's a little nod to the Salamiri in Thrawn's office. But Dave was like, that's not something that we wanted to do with Thrawn here. Mm -hmm. So I think they're probably going to keep that going. Lucas was very adamant that, you know, the Force is everywhere. It is part of all life. And unless that galaxy is completely devoid of life, I don't know how the Force wouldn't be around. I mean, Ezra and Thrawn, if they're the only two people there, there's still life. There's still the Force. Yeah, I definitely think the Force is going to be present there. It came up a little bit in our live stream last night about the wellspring of life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's one of those in every galaxy. I think that's a really interesting thought that at the center of every single galaxy is some sort of source of the force. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's just speculation, kind of a fun thought, not confirmed. It could be that the main galaxy of Star Wars is like the center point of the universe. And that's where the force began. But I think every other galaxy would still have the force no matter what, like to talk about the Yuuzhan Vong in Legends. That was something else that Lucas was like, they can't exist outside of the Force. Uh, they were a, a culture that basically was so 
heinous that the the force was like we're not even gonna mess with you anymore Mm -hmm. and lucas was like that's not how the force works yeah so he he was very adamant that uh the force existed everywhere and within all things so i I think we'll still see it but the force is i think very much about how you think of it mentally kind of like there is no spoon the the matrix and trying to wrap your head around how things work so Ezra being disconnected from his family and from his home, I do think could affect how he uses the force. It, mm-hmm. it could feel diminished to him just because that's how he envisions it. Yeah. It's like the upside down over there. Could like, be. It just feels different. Yeah. Just feels off. Meg Brennan asks if Chopper has grown soft in his old age. <laughs> We've had five episodes out of eight and Chopper hasn't killed a single person. I... I do think it's interesting to see Chopper as baby, babysitter Chopper, um, but he's he's been in this family for so long. I think he knows his role is to keep Jason safe because Hera is a little bit busy as a general, um, but I still think we're going to get a scene with him doing something wild. I do too. I, I'm hopeful for it at least. Again, not trying to get my hopes up. But since we've seen that he is Jason's keeper in many ways and like watching them play tag, first of all, I was like, don't play tag with Chopper. He'll like (laughs) zap you when he tags you. Uh, But if we see something where in the last episode, Thrawn comes back, maybe stormtroopers are attacking and like Jason is in danger, we can see Chopper go full babysitter mode. But Mm -hmm. Uh, with guns <laughs> like I, I do kind of hope that there is a classic chopper uh, airlocks a bunch of stormtroopers scene just like in Star Wars Rebels yeah I I guess I keep thinking of the scene where it's really sweet and we see chopper reach up to hold Hera's hand yeah after uh, Kanan dies like there's always been a soft spot in chopper like it he has the ability to to show love and affection and obviously he's he's surviving as a babysitter and Hera is allowing him to babysit Jason so i don't know i think i think he's good in that role but we just haven't seen him in the position where he can go full chaos bucket as as you like to call him right yeah things are kind of dire right now they're, they're dire, but slow. Like, the, he has not been in any immediate danger where he could have done something really chaotic about it. Mm-hmm. He was stuck in the Phantom at that one point. And we did, you know, there's hints of his chaos that he's like, just shoot it down, let it crash into the city, who cares? Yeah. Uh, but I would like to see him go nuts on some stormtroopers. Pippin, I really don't feel like editing out your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Ari Koenig wants to know why we didn't see any of the clones' faces. I brought this up just because you laughed at it. That like It's great that they had the clones physically there on set in armor, uh, but because they couldn't have Tamira Morrison be everywhere all at once, they're like, uh, this one's injured, and they wrapped up his face in bandages. Mm-hmm. Although that was the only clone out that like we could have had Tamira Morrison there injured because Rex had his helmet on the whole time. I just, it's got to be a budget thing. You know, like they've spent so much making Ahsoka and Anakin look so good and, you know, the rest of the characters that I just feel like they were like, "Eh, keep the helmets on. We can't really afford to have de-aged Tamira Morrison on all of these bodies. It's it's budget. I I didn't even think about that, how they probably would have de-aged him a bit. But it's it's budget and or timing. Like, they, they got him in a sound booth to record Rex's lines. Uh, but we don't know. There just may have been a scheduling issue where they could not have gotten Timuro Morrison for that day. Uh, it would have been really great to see Rex with his helmet off, I think. But, yeah, there, there was just so much going on in that episode. And I do think they spent a ton of money on the de-aging. And so, production-wise, they were like, we're just going to have the voice, and that'll be enough. Mm-hmm. Grogu asks if the Eye of Scion or the Pergil would win in a hyperspace race. If they left at the exact same time, who do you think wins? Nature or technology? Uh, 
I want to say nature, Pergil, just because like they were born with the ability to do that. They they can't malfunction. <laughs> they can't <laughs> mess yeah. that up. Uh, now I'm wondering if there has ever been a Pergil that just like went way <laughs> off course, like whoops. He's drunk. Send him home. <laughs> he had too much clues on 36 or whatever that gas is <laughs> from Star Wars Rebels. Uh, I agree. I'm hoping it's the Pergil. Uh, but the Eye of Scion does have like six or seven hyperdrives in it. But that that just seemed to be like, we got to really overcompensate. And for the Pergil, they're like, this is nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ahsoka wants to go to another galaxy. Yeah, hop in. We got this. No problem. I would love a scene like that, though, that's like like Greece. Where they're where they race, and just they're like revving engine. Well, the Pergil don't have engines to rev. They've got but their little like tentacles that they, glow and stuff. They so could they're... like growl or something. <laughs> uh, I would dig that. Maybe we'll get a race back to the the main galaxy at the end of the season because I assume that hyperspace ring is coming back with a star destroyer. Uh, we don't know how our heroes are going to get back, but they could just take the same way. So maybe we will literally get a space race. I, th- I feel like Race of the Pergil sounds like a Legends book. Mm, I could see that. I, that. That sounds like a cool soundtrack uh, mm. title, too. Vax Steel wants to know our thoughts on Stig Asmussen leaving Respawn. Yeah, that was some surprise news that came out. I think it was yesterday slash Wednesday. We're recording this Thursday. Uh, yeah. That I, I'm not crazy about it just because I love Fallen Order and Survivor and he was the game director for both. So I, I don't want anything to be messed with there. But on the flip side, you know, I, I don't know why he left. Uh, it said it was to pursue other creative interests. If he's not feeling like doing another Star Wars game, if his heart's not in it, then, you know, that could also affect things. So I'm I'm trying to look at both sides. Mm-hmm. My immediate reaction was like, oh no. Oh like no. just because I, I I want the third game, of course, to also be as good as the first two. Yeah. I'm I, I really I'm gonna be optimistic and hope that it will be. Hopefully it wasn't over any like big creative differences and it was kind of a mutual decision. And, you know, People change careers, career paths all the time. Uh, keeping positive thoughts about it, maybe he just got another opportunity somewhere else that he was like really hoping for. Yeah, it's very possible. Again, like I, I just read one article about it and did not see uh, any specifics. I don't know that he wants specifics out or anyone does, but th- they're going to have, it said like veteran leadership is going to step in to take leadership over it said continuing development of star wars jedi survivor so that might mean that they're gonna look at releasing some new stuff for the game uh but i assume that also means for the third game hopefully this doesn't mean they're gonna not do a third game i doubt that i i think that the franchise has done well for respawn and ea so i'm sure they want to do a third and I'm sure there are plenty of people on the team that are still excited about doing a third one. So it was news that I immediately uh, reacted to kind of with apprehension. I was scared about it, but the the whole team, it wasn't just Stig that made that game. The whole team put their heart and souls into it. And it's both of them are great. So I have high hopes for the third regardless. It's just that in an ideal world, it would have been the same team making the same great level of game yeah he put his whole asmus in this in it oh my god <laughs> <laughs> dune fan 22 asks if balen's skull will return to the light side by the end of the series i don't know why but i don't see that in his future i don't either but th- there's room for it i think certainly yeah i i feel like shin would have a hard time with that because she's like so intense and like really into this darker side role but maybe if if he did she would follow step you know that's an interesting thought that i hadn't considered in my mind for whatever reason i'm like balin is gonna stay true to whatever he currently believes we still don't really know their full motivations so obviously i want to learn more about what's driving him but i i've kind of been guessing that shin would be the one to swap allegiances 
but it would be wild to see him go back to the light side and her say, no, no, this is what you trained me to do, mm. and I'm going to stick with it. I, I think that's an interesting take, too. Yeah. I I just get the feeling that they're neither of them are going to survive this season, mm. and, but I don't want that to happen, though, because I love those two so far. They're great characters. I want to learn more about them. I feel like we only have three episodes left, and so I'm like, let's learn a little more. Uh, but I, I, I get the sense just gut feeling that Shin will probably go to the light side. Maybe not in this season, but if she has a continuing story over the course of the Mandoverse, the Filoni, New Republic, Imperial Remnant story, uh, I think eventually she's going to come back. Yeah, and I I feel like Ahsoka, after fighting Balin the first time, I feel like they need to rematch, and she's Ahsoka the White now, and right. I get the feeling that she might win. Yeah, oh, that that just feels like the Rocky-style dynamic, the story structure of they fight, she loses, she goes through something, and now her spirit is centered, they fight, she wins. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll just have to see how it goes in three more weeks. Dragon Blaster wants to know if Yoda's species could be from a different galaxy. Could be. I like that, actually. And that would explain why we don't see very many of them. We've, we've seen three of them. Do you think they just occasionally pop over? Like maybe Yoda's species are sending out like scout ships? Hold on. With infants in it? Oh, okay. I'm having a thought. Uh-oh. What if... Grogu recognized the Pergil because he remembers ta- riding one, taking the, the- <laughs> yeah, taking one to this galaxy as a bebe. Uh huh. Could mm-hmm. be, could be. Someone, uh, I, someone on Twitter said that like, oh, maybe he was sensing that Ahsoka was in one of those exact Pergil well, uh, going in that direction. Rick Villanueva on our Patreon suggested that as well. That we've heard that this is going on at the same time as the Mandalorian season three. So that could have been the pot, the same pot of Pergil. I'm not thinking that's the case right now. I think it's more likely that they were just setting up the audience to be like space whales. It's a thing. Mm. (laughs) Uh, I I have always just assumed Yoda species are from the main galaxy. Uh, but we know so little about them that who's to say? Like, I think we just have to go off our own headcanon at this point. So if you like the idea from another galaxy, then so be it. I feel like that would have been the best kept secret in all of Star Wars history. The fact that Yoda's Yoda and Yaddle were like keeping their lips sealed on where they were from because it was another galaxy. We're going to get to the other galaxy and it's just... A galaxy full of Yodas. Oh. And that they're going to be like, ah, oh, found us you have. A whole planet of baby Yodas. Yep. <laughs> that, oh, that's how they're going to do it. Instead of having uh, the next episodes be taken over by uh, Din and Grogu, it's just going to be taken over by a planet full of Yodas. Yeah. Everyone's like, do you think Din and Grogu are going to show up in this show? And it's like, eh, maybe not. But what if like other baby Yodas are there? Like a bunch of them. A whole gaggle of baby Yodas. I, I want it. We're going to end this Q&A the same way we have for the past few weeks with a conversation card from our friend Kelly Knox, who wrote them all. Oh, this one is one of the Force cards. What are some ways that you can be more like a Jedi in real life? Oh. Meditate. That, okay, let's get into it. Yeah, meditate. Uh, I, I, I love a good meditation session. I mean, I think... Just self-care in general. Like, you had to remind me to eat today. Part of that was because I am still a little sick and had no appetite. But (laughs) paying attention to stuff like that. I think waking up every day and choosing to acknowledge any dark thoughts you might have but not act on them. And keeping that balance in your life. Like, don't ignore any dark thoughts or darkness that you may have inside. Just accept it acknowledge it and try to keep a good balance uh i was gonna say just patience i think i can i I go back and forth sometimes i have great patience and sometimes 
when I'm sick or something, I can feel it wearing thin. Mm. So maintaining your your patience and your good vibes, even when times are a little harder. Yeah, it's all about the vibes, man. Yeah, just keep good vibes, yo. Live in the moment. That's all the time we have for questions today, but we did want to shout out our friends at Mosh Isley because they are doing another event at New York City Comic Con on October 14th in just under a month. It's going to be at Gramercy Theater. If you've never been to Mosh Isley, it's like a punk pop emo night uh, full of lightsabers. It's Star Wars themed and they have done it at several conventions. We have gone to all of the ones we've been in town for. Uh, I think two at a celebration. We went to the one at Comic-Con. It's always a blast if you like that type of music, uh, which I do. I love it and adore it. So uh, it's always, always a great time. So we'll put a link in the description to get your tickets if you're going to be out at New York City Comic-Con. But that's it for today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.